The second generation Suzuki Ignis arrived on UK roads in 2017 and over the years it's been a very popular offering for the Japanese brand. Some would say the front end here looks quite cute with this low clamshell bonnet design drawing your attention towards these wide-eyed LED headlamps that come as standard with low and high beam to maximise nighttime visibility. I enjoy the black front grille with those chrome accents and the Suzuki badge prominently displayed in the center. As standard, you get 15 inch steel wheels, though if you climb up the range to mid-spec SZT and top spec SZ5 trim levels, you get 16 inch alloy wheels in this lovely black design. Electrically adjustable door mirrors come as standard and the top spec grade adds built-in indicators to these. And up here we've got roof rails, you get those with the top spec grade too, to further convince you that this is a rugged small SUV. The Ignis flaunts a prominent rear end with curves to the body styling and these bold LED rear combination lamps creating a unique look for a vehicle this small. Okay guys, we're looking at a 267 litre compartment here. That's more than you get with the majority of city car rivals like the Kia Picanto, VW Up and the Fiat Panda. There's not much in the way of compartment niceties, no hooks to attach objects to the floor, but we do have some underfloor storage reserved for the maintenance tools and I like to see what you're doing at night. If you want to extend the boot capacity on offer, there's two options here. The first one is you can slide the rear bench forward. This is available with higher spec grades for the Ignis. Just pull up on the rightmost lever and you're able to slide both benches forward like so, extending the boot capacity on offer there. You can also fold down the rear bench entirely in a 50-50 arrangement with this particular model and we'll explain why that's the case a little bit later on. And that rewards you with a total of 1,100 litres to play with. As you can see though, there's a significant step in the floor. It's by no means flat, so any objects you want to take to the tip, they're going to be at quite an awkward angle if they're long and awkwardly sized. But this should be enough space for an adult's bike if you take the wheel off. It might be a bit of a squeeze though. Okay guys, let's talk drivetrain. So Suzuki first introduced its 1.2 litre dual tech technology with the Swift in 2016. They then arrived with the Baleno in 2017 and then a bit later on with the Ignis. The facelifted version of the Ignis replaced this with a more efficient dual tech unit that serves to reduce CO2 emissions and maximize fuel economy. Let's talk about that all grip, all wheel drive system as it's very surprising to see this event with such a small car. This enables you to transfer additional torque to the rear wheels to enhance stability and traction control and it also enhances the Ignis's cornering ability too. The Ignis has soft suspension and that translates to a rather comfortable ride around town and even when you're up to speed on the motorway it does a surprisingly good job for a small car at handling light undulations and even absorbing the impact of large humps and bumps in city centres. Suzuki claims efforts were made to reduce cabin noise and vibration. Indeed we've got moulded headlining and silencers under the bonnet but unfortunately it hasn't done a great job because as you can see it's absolutely chucking it down right now and when I've been travelling at speeds above 40 miles an hour on an A road to get a particular take, I'm having to shout in order for the microphone to pick up my voice appropriately and drown out the other sounds. The engine at low rev sounds rather rowdy but I quite like this, it doesn't sound coarse and it gives the Ignis a lot of character. Due to the high ground clearance there is a lot of road noise seeping into the cabin though, even at these slower speeds, I'm just cruising along a country road right now and there is a fair bit of wind noise coming from around the mirrors and windscreen especially at most motorway speeds. Though having said that, the ground clearance in combination with the good seat adjustability provides an excellent view over that short bonnet to the road ahead. The side pillars could be slim in my view. I would like a bit of cut out glass here, making it easier to see roundabouts. These are quite chunky, they do obscure your view at roundabouts a little bit. The mirrors are a decent size for a small car and the view at the back is pretty good as well for a car this size. Over the shoulder view though, not so good. You've got a chunky rear pillar there, so if you're particularly anxious or concerned about parking this vehicle, do consider getting either the SZT or the SZ5 trim level because you get a rear view camera. 
when it comes to interior quality, Suzuki are usually function over style in this regard, and this is certainly the case with the Ignis. What's likely my favorite thing about the Ignis as a whole is the incredible amount of interior space on offer. Thanks to the steep windscreen and the high roof line, the Ignis feels tall inside. And as you can see at 5'8", I'm nowhere near the top of that roof lining. So drivers who are 6'4 over should not have an issue finding a comfortable position. And this works nicely in tandem with the great amount of seat adjustability that you get. Unfortunately, it's not electronic. It's all manual using the levers to the right hand side. But if you bought the Ignis for its small SUV capabilities, you can pump yourself up really high, getting a fantastic view over that bonnet there. Or if you want a more engaging drive, you can come down, extend that legroom and find that comfortable position for you. While seat adjustment is good, sadly the same can't be said about the steering wheel. It manually adjusts for height up and down, but not for reach forwards and backwards. So you'll be faffing around quite a bit to find that perfect driving position. Top spec SZ5 trims get this three spoke leather steering wheel and the leather on this feels nice and grippy, adding somewhat of a premium flair to the cabin. Behind the wheel, we've got a really tiny driver display to the right hand side showing you basic driving information such as your average fuel economy, how much range you've got left and how much fuel you've saved by idling at standstill. On all but entry level models which get this MP3 compatible CD player in the center console receive a seven inch central touchscreen display. This is an aftermarket Pioneer system and it has DAB radio, Bluetooth and wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connection enabling you to mirror your smartphone apps directly onto the display which you may want to do because unfortunately Suzuki's software with this Ignis is quite outdated. It's laggy to navigate around, it's quite slow to load and the graphics aren't particularly sharp. Up. Also on a particularly sunny day, it does absorb that glare, so you'll struggle to make up some of the options. As standard, you get manual air con, the top spec grade upgrade this to automatic air conditioning, and the climate controls are all presented in this rather nicely designed cluster here. The buttons are nice and tactile, very satisfying to press, and it's an absolute breeze adjusting the air intensity and the temperature while on the go. Below the aircon cluster, we've got a USB port for mirroring your smartphone apps onto the display, plus an AUX port. Some drive mode select buttons and a 12 volt socket. Nice sizable compartment for your mobile phone, which you could also plug in to charge if you want. And a couple of cup holders. These are really small though. I think they're just about fit a Starbucks coffee cup. So when we measure the rear space up against other small SUV alternatives, of course the Ignis pales in comparison, but compared to other city cars on the market, it's perhaps class leading, exceptionally generous. In fact, inside the Ignis, we can come Comfortably accommodate four adult passengers, which you can't say is the case for a lot of other small cars out there. On the plus side, the doors are open nice and wide. Look at that, about 80 degrees there. And thanks to the car's relatively high roof line in comparison to other city cars, elderly passengers won't find themselves leaning and maneuvering in as awkwardly as those smaller vehicle equivalents. So they could get in quite comfortably and you could fit a kid's seat in quite easily as well. And then attach them to the Isofix fittings on either bench, which don't have covers on them. So you simply slot them in, lock them in, and you're good to go. Okay guys, should you buy, lease or finance a Suzuki Ignis? Well, there's an awful lot going for this model. The attractive, rugged design, the exceptionally efficient fuel economy thanks to that hybrid system, and the amount of space inside is just so impressive for a small car. All of these things set it apart from the competition. Plus, it's generously equipped to standard, and it's more affordable than many small SUVs on the market. So if you want a small car that drives like an SUV but doesn't have the form factor of one, well, I can't recommend a better option. If you have any questions about the Ignis, then get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialist via the number in the banner below. Alternatively, you can just click the pop-up banner up there to book a free consultation with our team at a time that best works for you. And down below in the description, we have a very special link. And if you click that, you'll head over to the website and you'll see all the hottest, latest lease deals we have available, not just the Ignis, but other Suzuki models. Thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed it thumbs up subscribe as well if you haven't already done so and there's a notification bell down there if you click that you'll get notified when we upload the next in-depth review but that's it for today thank you for watching take care and safe driving